Welcome to morning prayer on Wednesday the 29th of July. O oh Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O oh Lord our Governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Your majesty above the heavens is praised, out of the mouths of babes at the breast. You have founded a stronghold against your foes, that you might still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have ordained. What are mortals that you should be mindful of them? They are human beings that you should seek them out. You have made them little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honour. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands and put all things under their feet. All sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field. The birds of the air, the fish of the sea and whatsoever moves in the paths of the sea. O Lord our governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Glory, glory to, to the, the Father and to the Son and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, beginning is now and shall, shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And our psalm this morning is the first part of Psalm 119. Blessed are those whose way is pure, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies and seek him with their whole hearts. Those who do no wickedness but walk in his ways. You, O Lord, have charged that we should diligently keep your commandments. Oh that my ways, oh that my ways were made so direct that I might keep your statutes. Then should I not be put to shame, because I have regard for all your commandments. I shall thank you with an unfeigned heart when I have learned your righteous judgments. I will keep your statutes, O forsake me not utterly. How shall young people cleanse their way to keep themselves according to your word? With my whole heart have I sought you. O oh, let me not go astray from your commandments. Your words have I hidden within my heart that I should not sin against you. Blessed are you, O oh Lord. O oh, teach me your statutes. With my lips I have been telling of all the judgments of your mouth. I have taken greater delight in the way of your testimonies than in all manner of riches. I will meditate on your commandments and contemplate your ways. My delight shall be in your statues, statutes, and I will not forget your word. O oh, do good to your servant that I may live, and so shall I keep your word. Open my eyes that I may see the wonders of your law. I am a stranger upon earth. Hide not your commandments from me. My soul is consumed at all times with fervent longing for your judgments. You have rebuked the arrogant, cursed to those who stray from your commandments. Turn from me shame and rebuke, for I have kept your testimonies. Rulers also sit and speak against me, but your servant meditates on your statutes. For your testimonies are my delight, they are my faithful counsellors. My soul cleaves to the dust, or give me life according to your word. I have acknowledged my ways, and you have answered me. O oh, teach me your statutes. Make me understand the way of your commandments, and so shall I meditate on your wondrous works. My soul melts away in tears of sorrow. Raise me up according to your word. Take from me the way of falsehood. Be gracious to me through your law. I have chosen the way of truth, and your judgments have I laid before me. I hold fast to your testimonies. O oh Lord, let me not be put to shame. I will run the way of your commandments, when you have set my heart at liberty. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our reading is from 1 Samuel chapter 11. About a month later, Nahash the Ammonite went up and besieged Jabesh Gilead. And all the men of Jabesh said to Nahash, Make a treaty with us, and we will serve you. But Nahash the Ammonite said to them, On this condition I will make a treaty with you, namely that I gouge out everyone's right eye and thus put disgrace upon all Israel. The elders of Jabesh said to him, Give us seven days respite that we may send messengers through all the territory of Israel. Then 
If there is no one to save us, we will give ourselves up to you. When the messengers came to Gibeah of Saul, they reported the matter in the hearing of the people, and all the people wept aloud. Now Saul was coming from the field behind the oxen, and Saul said, What is the matter with the people that they are weeping? So they told him the message from the inhabitants of Jabesh, and the Spirit of God came upon Saul in power when he heard these words, and his anger was greatly kindled. He took a yoke of oxen and cut them in pieces and sent them throughout all the territory of Israel by messengers, saying, Whoever does not come out after Saul and Samuel, so shall it be done to his oxen. Then the dread of the Lord fell upon the people, and they came out as one. When he mustered them at Bezek, those from Israel were three hundred thousand, and those from Judah seventy thousand. They said to the messengers who had come, Thus shall you say to the inhabitants of Jabesh Gilead, Tomorrow, by the time the sun is hot, you shall have deliverance. When the messengers came and told the inhabitants of Jabesh, they rejoiced. So the inhabitants of Jabesh said, Tomorrow we will give ourselves up to you, and you may do to us whatever seems good to you. The next day Saul put the people in three companies. At the morning watch they came into the camp and cut down the Ammonites until the heat of the day, and those who survived were scattered, so that no two of them were left together. The people said to Samuel, Who is it that said, Shall Saul reign over us? Give them to us, so that we may put them to death. But Saul said, No one shall be put to death this day, for today the Lord has brought deliverance to Israel. Samuel said to the people, Come, let us go to Gilgal, and there renew the kingship. So all the people went to Gilgal, and there they made Saul king before the Lord in Gilgal. There they sacrificed offerings of well-being before the Lord, and there Saul and all the Israelites rejoiced greatly. So we left them yesterday with the siege starting and the Ammonites uh, strategy known to us. Uh, but there's a month, a month later before this starts. Yeah, well actually the yesterday there, there were a large group, I can't remember, 7,000 or something, of the men had taken refuge in Jabesh Gilead. Yes. And Nahash had been busy gouging out their right eyes at this lot. And so now he comes and lays siege to Gabesh Gilead and they say, make a treaty. And he says, Uncle Nushla can gouge out your right eye. Well, what's wrong with this man that he that wants to gouge out everyone's right eye? Um, I suppose it's, it's a sort of, will bring shame on the people and totally handicap them in terms of, you know, the yes. Doing, the and it's interesting, anything. he says, uh, and it, it, it's his intention to, to bring, bring disgrace, disgrace upon, upon all Israel. Israel. Not just Jabesh Gilead, not just the two and a half tribes, but all Israel. Mm. Yeah, so they were, despite being a besieged city, they were able to, some people from Jabesh were able to go and tell others what was happening. I'm, I'm surprised that uh, um, uh, Nahash agreed to this, give us seven days and see if anyone comes to help us. You might say tough. If you, if you can't but it would take him more than seven days anyway to take a besieged city because hmm. he's surrounding it. There are walls. Uh, you lose a lot of troops if you attack the walls and go in that way. So you hope to starve them out, redu reduce morale, hope their water supplies runs out. Okay, uh, so he's thinking it, after seven days, no one's going to come and help them and they're going to be all the weaker. So it'll be easier and for me. To surrender. Yeah. So if they'll just open the gates, we don't have to storm. Yeah. Okay. So he didn't believe that anyone was going to come to help no. them. But uh, it's interesting. Saul was in the field, uh, plowing the field with the oxen. So he had been crowned king. Yes. Uh, and yeah, I suppose there wasn't there weren't any matters of state for him to deal with at the time. And I suppose this, he was the first king. There was no court or anything set up yet. Uh, no no instruments of government or anything and so he was crowned king and he went back to plowing the fields but here uh, once he hears about the plight of these people he does have a sense of being the king of the whole of Israel um, he, uh, he sends out this message to rally the troops 
um, well, the Spirit of God comes upon him in power. <coughs> and um, he sends out this call to rally the troops, and they come, and he sends a message to Jabesh Gilead to say, we're coming. And uh, uh, they rejoice, and they say, and they say to Nahash, okay, tomorrow we'll give ourselves up to you, uh, knowing that they were going to be rescued. To. And the Ammonites were uh, cut down, they scattered, no two of them were left together. Uh, and then the, the Saul has proven himself now to be uh, uh, a worthy king. Yes. And so his supporters say, who were that lot who said, you know, why on earth has Saul become king? Let's c kill them. And that's, there's so much killing happens. Uh, it's, it's good to hear about Saul say, no, yes. no, don't. Um, uh, uh, for a change, you know, don't don't kill, put them to death, um, and they. And Saul, by his actions, has answered the questions of the people who. Who said uh, why should yes. he be king? He's proven uh, himself, and uh, so Samuel says, "Let's all go to Gilgal and have another coronation celebration," yes. uh, which is what they do, along with sacrificing offers, offerings of well-being before the Lord. That, that's great, that that's their way of celebrating, putting God first and celebrating uh, Saul's kingship. So, And this is quite a high point for Saul, yeah. it's, it's early on, um, so he's, he's dealt with the problems on the other side of the Jordan for the time being. Uh, he's still got Amalekites and Philistines to worry about back at home, side, but yeah. so this is, this is a, a good moment for him. Return to the Lord who will have mercy, to our God who will richly pardon. Seek the Lord while he may be found, call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked abandon their ways, and the unrighteous their thoughts. Return to the Lord who will have mercy, to our God who will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from above and return not again but water the earth. Bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread to eat. So is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me fruitless. But it will accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the task I gave it. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father and, and to the Son and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was, was in the beginning, is now and shall, shall be forever. forever. Amen. Return to the Lord who will have mercy, to our God who will richly pardon. And the New Testament reading comes from Luke chapter 22, starting at verse 39. Jesus came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down on the ground. When he got up from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping because of grief. And he said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray, that you may not come into the time of trial. Mm. So the garden agony of, in the garden. Garden of Gethsemane on the slopes of the Mount of Olives. And mm. Jesus is going to his usual place of prayer on his way back from the day in Jerusalem. Uh, he would be then heading across to Bethany where he was staying. But um, the whole thing has become quite exhausting for the disciples. The tension must have been quite palpable for them. And it says that uh, they were sleeping because of grief, uh, grief, anxiety, concern, uncertainty, uh, all sorts of things. It just tired them out. Mm. This, this famous prayer, Father, if you're willing, remove this cup from me, not my will, but yours be done. Um, uh, if people think that uh, 
Jesus was God in disguise and in fact uh, he had all the powers uh, of, of the Godhead uh, there would have been no need for him this is such a human cry yes. and again we remember that he has put aside everything that pertains to him, his divinity he is human and this is just a cry of the heart from a human being uh, in anguish and dread of the agony that's coming and yet determined to do the Father's will. Um, but uh, this is uh, yeah, an amazing prayer. And it's not quite clear um, whether Luke added the next sentence. But in brackets here. The, yes, mm. the double brackets indicate that there's some doubt as to the genuineness of it. it. That it's in the text indicates that it's thought to be highly likely, but it's not 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 in all the manuscripts. Mm. So an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength, mm. which seems to be the only answer here to his prayer. You can see why somebody might choose to add this in, thinking there has to be an answer to the prayer of some sort before it goes on. But there's uh, other times when angels come and minister in the, the, in the temptations in the desert after yes. Satan leaves him angels come and minister to him and then he says to the disciples pray that you may not come into the time of trial which is also mm. one of those phrases from the Lord's Prayer um, to deliver us from the time of trial uh, that there is that sense uh, running through the New Testament of a huge tribulation coming uh, which Jesus certainly is is part of and the difficulties for the disciples are severe mm. yeah yes Jesus takes the brunt of the the, 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 tri the agony the, yeah takes the he's like he's a the eye of the storm he takes the full force of the what is to come but those around him will also suffer yes in other ways lord you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory lord you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory for i am always with you you hold me by my right hand afterwards receive me with glory glory to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit lord you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory and let's use a, a song of redemption today as a another variation christ, christ is, is the, the image of, of the invisible, invisible god, god the firstborn of, of all creation. creation the father has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of our sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. All things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. In him, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him, God was pleased to reconcile all things. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and, and shall, shall be forever. forever. Amen. Christ is the image of the, the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who are uh, imprisoned because of their faith, because of their beliefs, or sometimes just imprisoned uh, unjustly. And hearing about uh, uh, Kylie Morris Gilbert uh, imprisoned in Iran and being moved from one place to another, we cry out to, to you for her. Heavenly Father, we bring before you the 
problems that she is facing and those who know and love her face. And Heavenly Father, we pray for the country too, which gains nothing by this sort of treatment of those who come on academic visits to the country. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would be close to those who suffer for their beliefs and for who they are, and we pray for their deliverance. Amen. Father God, we are concerned about the uh, rise in unemployment uh, in this country, Lord, um, due to uh, coronavirus mainly. Um, so many places have been laying off people, making people redundant. Uh, people have been losing their jobs and their businesses. And Father God, we do pray uh, for all those who uh, uh, have had the bad news that they no longer are employed and those who are dreading maybe today or tomorrow hearing the same news. Father God we pray for our government that they will be able to come <coughs> up with, with good strategies to help and support uh, all who are unemployed and we pray Lord for those agencies that are with it, helping them uh, to find new jobs and Lord we pray for the owners of businesses and industry uh, that they might be able to find new and creative ways of uh, working that will mean jobs for the people and Lord for uh, others as well we just pray that as things have changed so much around us that we won't be just constantly grasping, uh, trying to hold on uh, to what we had. And Lord, we do pray for uh, new creative and imaginative ways of, uh, um, of working, that uh, ways that will be productive and will be of benefit. And Father God, as those things we hope evolve. We just pray today for all who are unemployed and are fearing the future and wondering how to make ends meet today and tomorrow and in the days to come. In Jesus' name. Amen. And Heavenly Father, as the government seeks to uh, define regulations for all sorts of different areas, we bring before you the debates that follow. Heavenly Father, we uh, pray for a greater understanding as to uh, when travel bans or quarantines are likely to be introduced in different settings. And Heavenly Father, we bring before you the debates that go on about different locations for the wearing of masks and pray for clarity about the situation in schools as the matter is taken up uh, again and again. Heavenly Father, we pray that regulations may help us to work towards keeping safe ourselves and keeping others safe. But we pray, Heavenly Father, as well for a deeper understanding of what it is that is going on. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Father God, we pray for the children and young people of this parish and uh, Thank you, Lord, for the way the plans for the children's work, the online children's work over the summer, are coming together. Thank you, Lord, for the team of people who have got together, for the number of volunteers that have been such an encouragement. And we do pray, Lord, for each person as they prepare their part, as they record uh, what they are going to be uh, doing. Uh, we pray, Lord, that you would breathe your spirit uh, into everything that we do that you would guide each one of us Lord uh, as we prepare and we pray Lord for the children uh, that they will watch and that they will be blessed uh, by what is on offer that your spirit will be at work in all the homes Lord uh, roundabouts and for uh, the young people as well 
Lord, we pray that uh, you would help us to keep in touch with them over the summer and that you would have your hand upon them. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God our Father, whose son enjoyed the love of his friends Mary, Martha and Lazarus in learning, argument and hospitality, may we so rejoice in your love that the world may come to know the depths of your wisdom, the wonder of your compassion, and your power to bring life out of death. Through the merits of Jesus Christ, our friend and brother, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our, our Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil, and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.